want to talk about disposal. And the first thing I want to bring up is that we're really talking about two issues. And the first one, obviously, is chemical, some kind of pesticide. But the one a lot of people don't think so much about is your container. And I see a lot of abuse with containers, even in, in backyards, in farmyards, and people's homes. So if you take a look at this slide, these are some horribly inappropriate disposal issues that happened here in Missouri, where somebody was just dumping their trash and their pesticide containers in the creek. So you have these jugs and cans and all kinds of containers had chemical left in the containers. And this is a classic example of improper disposal. As these cartons break down in UV light, they rust, they release those chemicals into the environment. And something to keep in mind is that there are several modes of exposure to pesticides in humans. And these pesticides are designed to kill something. Well, if they kill, say, bees, they can kill humans because we have similar cell structures and, and enzymes. And so this is a horrible example where bees were actually killed by a poor insecticide application, but the same thing can happen with pets, livestock, and people. So it's critical that we use pesticides properly and dispose of them properly. So here's a slide I showed in my last presentation. It just shows your organic copper fungicide. It's very safe, right? Well, you look at the effects it can have on the body. There's quite a few effects of your average organic pesticide. So it doesn't even really matter what the chemical is. You want to treat them all with respect and follow the label. That's what they invest so much money for is to create a label that tells us how to use and dispose and store these chemicals properly. So the most important thing any of us can ever talk about with chemicals and pesticides, read the label. We say it over and over, but so few people do it in reality, and it can save you a lot of pain and a lot of headaches and help you use the product properly. Now, this is a classic picture of a child playing with a pesticide container. I staged this photo just so you know. She's actually very trained and washed her hands, and this was an unopened carton. Just disclaimer there. But I've actually seen this kind of thing out in town. I mean, it's crazy how parents will use up a pesticide and the kids end up using the thing as a squirt bottle for a toy. It's like, no, 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 no. There are residues inside that container that will continue to release. This is that empty container isn't really ever empty. It's a hazardous item. So it needs to be properly disposed. So Honestly, I haven't told a lot of people this, but I'm kind of a prepper and a hoarder. I like doing a lot of survival stuff, and it's part of what my garden is. But the pesticide safety instructor in me takes precedence here. Pesticides are just not something you want to hoard. The more you have on hand, the more hazard, the more liability, the more risk you're exposing you and the environment and your neighbors and people around you to. So let the stores stockpile the chemicals, only buy the minimum you need. And that goes back to that previous slide. Read the label, try to calculate how much you're going to need in this immediate season and only buy that minimal amount. I can't emphasize this is enough. And this is how I always, when I was a commercial applicator, kept a minimal amount in storage. If that thing catches on fire or a tornado hits, it's that much less chemical that's going to go out there in the environment. So one of the little tricks I want to throw out there, I see this, in, Department of Natural Resources sees this all the time. People come in with these old degraded chemical containers. They don't even know what they are. So this is a classic example where this carton was stamped. You can use an indelible pin. They actually use some indelible pin up here, but there's a release date when they took this out of the store. And that tells you how old it is. So years down the road, you forget, when did I buy that stuff? Oh, yikes, 2005, this is probably expired. <laughs> if it's more than two or three years old, you want to question how good that chemical is. It might be time to take it to Department of Natural Resources. So it's a really good idea when you buy it, just mark it with a pen so you know the date and you can stay safe. The final step after you've used up the chemical and you've sprayed it out, triple rinse the container. So as you're doing your last application, say you have one ounce left in the carton, you pour that in, you mix it with the right amount of water. Before you fill up the water, you triple rinse your container. So you fill the container a quarter full, cap it, shake it up real good, pour that into the tank and repeat that three times. Now your container is triple rinsed. It's adequately rinsed so that when it goes to the landfill, it's not releasing a lot of chemical. You still wouldn't want to drink out of it, but it's pretty safe for the environment. 
And so you actually use that rinse in the tank and then top it off to the maximum level you needed to mix with your, your concentrated chemical. Then you puncture the container, stomp it so it's crushed and throw it in a dumpster. That's the critical thing that kept us out of trouble as commercial applicators is constantly disposing our cartons. It kept us out of trouble with the agencies and it kept that those cartons off of our site because we had a lot of homeless people that would actually come around and get cartons and use them for water bottles and things like that. You don't want that on your conscience. They're using your Halex GT herbicide as a water jug. So, and kids can do the same thing. I've seen kids in kiddie pools playing with empty chemical bottles that obviously were not triple rinsed. And so this is one of the most important things I can say. Now, when you mix a pesticide, you're not spraying concentrate typically out into the environment. It'll say something like four ounces per hundred gallons of water or teaspoon per four gallon backpack spray or whatever the, the product happens to be. And so you're actually applying a very diluted solution out there. So it's not as bad as if you ruptured a carton of fresh chemical out of the store. And so when this stuff gets released, there are multiple modes of degradation in the environment. This is something you don't hear a lot about, but ultraviolet light is very good at destroying that chemical that you've hopefully just coated your plants or coated the soil with, depending on your application. You're typically not just drenching your garden with some kind of chemical and soaking two feet down into the ground. There are some landscape applications, but typically for food crops and garden, you're just coating the leaves and then that UV light breaks those chemicals down, bacteria in the soil, the environment, and fungi, different microbes start breaking the stuff down. And then there's of course chemical reactions like hydrolysis and oxidation. So people don't realize how quickly chemicals are broken down in the environment by nature. And um, one of my good friends for his master's thesis, he actually did a study just like this slide shows here with oil spills actually culturing the bacteria that would most quickly break down oil spills. And it was phenomenal how quickly some of these bacteria and fungi can tear down hydrocarbons and the most toxic chemicals. So it's amazing what the environment can do. So this is a, a photo DNR sent me from just their recent uh, chemical pickup. And this is lead arsenate, heavy metals banned 30 something years ago, very toxic. And look how dilapidated that label is. It's nasty. It's faded. It's stained with who knows what. And this is the kind of thing we want to get out of the environment. And what happens is a lot of times stuff gets banned. It gets canceled or the label falls apart. There are many reasons people find themselves with some chemical and they don't know what to do with it. And that's really kind of the, the second phase. If you can't use something up, yeah, you're stuck with this chemical. You want to find where to dispose of it. The first step, store it in some kind of like plastic tote or some kind of container that's not permeable. So if it degrades or cracks, the stuff doesn't ooze out onto the floor of your storage facility. And then you want to make sure it's locked. This is one of the most important things I can't overemphasize. Please lock up your chemicals. If they're in your kitchen, your laundry room, your garage, make sure they're locked so kids and even kind of older kids don't, hey, let's do some experiment, mix some chemicals together. Just lock it up and reduce that liability. And then, of course, you want to follow a label. Label always has instructions about how to dispose properly. Now, here's an unacceptable photo. This is a real, this was not staged. This guy had, had been doing a bunch of, of pesticide application. He was just chucking the bottles in the back. You can see they're not slashed. They probably weren't triple wrenched. He had a bunch of residue in the, this tote. It rained. It actually overflowed and was all over the ground. Down here on the bottom, you see Department of Natural Resources test kit. They were finding traces all over the parking lot. It was a mess. It's so easy to avoid this. Just dispose of them as you go. You get one cart that's empty get rid of it. You have a bottle, you don't know what it is, or it's banned, take it to a collection event. It's not that complicated. And please never dump anything like this, any pesticides or cleaners down the drain or in a gutter, toilet, or out on the ground, because we do have collection events around the state. So this is more of a proper, what I was talking about, a, a impermeable tub, a plastic container here. And then in the back of a truck, this is being hauled from a farm to a collection event. And this is one of our collection events. Department of Natural Resources did, I think, five this year. And there's one more coming up here real soon. 
And it is phenomenal what's taking place here in Missouri. I'm very proud of Missouri for doing this. DNR has been absolutely wonderful. They just kind of open their arms and say, hey, if you're a household or a farm and you have some outdated chemicals, bring them on in on these events. We'll take them, no questions asked. And they're happy to take some illegal toxic stuff off your hands and properly dispose of it. They just get the satisfaction knowing it's being properly dealt with. They've collected over 15,000 pounds of old outdated pesticides just at the last event. I think over 140,000 pounds this season. The last event is coming up on August 13 in Versailles, and it's uh, going to be at the MoDOT maintenance facility from 8 to 12. So if anybody has any chemicals, take them there. It's worth the drive. So I just wanted to recap here. Use integrated pest management, which is just simply doing some common sense, using some scouting, make sure the pest is there and it's at a high enough level that it really needs to be treated. And uh, use other methods such as physical barriers like floating row covers or squishing the bugs on your leaves before you get to the pesticide stage. Once you have to use pesticides, read the label. They have that for a reason. And then buy the minimum amount possible and uh, don't forget to label it with a date because sometimes you end up with something for two or three years. You don't quite use it all up. You miscalculate. And it's good to know what that date is. And uh, mix the minimum amount for the job. Even if you have to mix two or three times, work your way up until the job is done. Don't just guess and make three times as much as you need. Don't forget, triple rinse on that line. When you get down, down on the line there, you're almost out of pesticide. You mix that last batch triple rinse that container and dump it into the tank and then finish filling the tank with water. And then you can puncture that carton, crush it and throw it in the trash. And then of course, store everything, whether it's stuff you're using or stuff you're gonna dispose of in a locked impermeable system. Contact a waste authority. Um, I'm, I have some resources that we can send out some websites and stuff um, listing how to figure out who your waste management authority is when DNR collection events will be taking place. And so I think it's just a, a wonderful time to be involved in this and really be cleaning this state up. And you can all be a part of that, spread the word. Neighbors have some kind of old scary chemical like chloridane or lead arsenate. They can take it and they get rid of it. So that's all I have. I have my contact information and you can track me down with questions.